So you've had a couple of days to uh, look at that game again, let it sink in. What do you think now? I mean, some of the same stuff that I said briefly after, you know. I, I mean, there was a sense of control, but to me it was, and the players, is a bit of false control. We had a lot of the ball, but it was a lot of the ball behind, in front of them, I mean. Um, some of our reactions at times, I mean, we did get the goal and we limited them, except for, you know, the two goals and, and a couple more. I think Putin had one save, I think. Could be wrong. Yeah, one save. Uh, but it's just about finding ways to close out the game. And teams, we've known this since last year. The year before, when I took over, it was more open games at home in the beginning. Now teams come in and they, because of the altitude, because of we do have some explosive players that really pack it in. And credit to them, you know. When, when I've done it a few times, it's worked. Um, but it's tough to play through. Not an excuse, you know. We have to figure out ways how to disorganize and play more direct and play behind. So there was a, you talked after the game about some of the balls, it was too simple. You were bypassing guys, mm -hmm. it was just passing to the next guy. It made it kind of predictable and easy to defend. How long does it take to get guys to execute that and to have the confidence to do it in the we moment? Talk, we use the C word every day, confidence. The confidence to break lines, the confidence to play through a space that once you look back on video, the players see, yeah, I should have played through that. But in the moment, maybe it happens too fast, you know, the, the, the ball movement. Things that we work on and talk about. So, you know, it's, we're going to keep doing that until we see it on a consistent level. We see it a lot in games, but not, not consistently enough. Um, players know that. Uh, we did video this morning. Um, it's just about reinforcing. Keep, keep, keep doing, keep pushing the narrative. Are you surprised that Colorado has brought in so many MLS veterans and yet had the start they've had? I mean, from the outside looking in, yes. But... You know, just like me as a coach, you know, here and in my former job, you know, people don't know what goes on behind closed doors. You know, people look at certain things in, in every team, every team, even top of the league teams, you know, all around the world. There's always people pointing things out. My point is, is that I have no idea what went on behind the closed doors. I have no idea what kind of coach Hudson was. I have no idea what the communication was and all that stuff. So. Outside of looking in, yes, they've brought in some veteran guys, some some powerful guys, especially in the attack. Uh, but that's showing, you know, they're, they're a very good team in the attack. And they I think they're a good team defensively, but they've struggled a lot defensively. Why that is, I could have my opinion, but it wouldn't be right for me to, to, to comment on that. With the first 10 games, you guys have 10 points. Uh, how do you kind of just assess these, these first 10 and kind of where you guys are? <laughs> Uh, where we are, 10 games in, uh, just coming up on a quarter way through the season, just right outside the playoff picture. Um, need to improve on many things, just like many other teams do. Um, around the league, there's a lot of teams struggling. I don't think we're struggling. I think that we're inconsistent. Um, and we have some home games coming up that we need to take advantage of. Albert was saying that um, he thinks that you guys should maybe be a little higher on the table. Do you have that same feeling too, that maybe there's been opportunities where you guys could be a little higher right now? I mean, uh, you, you, you could argue, you could point out, which I don't like to do, but you could point out the games that we played with red cards. Um, that obviously is, makes it extremely difficult. I feel that in those games, if we had 11 guys finish, I th I'm not saying we would have won all the games, but I think we have more points right now, for sure. Um, home game, uh, like the other night, letting slip through our fingers. Um, but, I mean, this team for three years now has gone through major uh, streaks, you know, streaks in the good form and streaks in the not so good form. Um, and each year we've, we, we've, the first year, we had the most points down the stretch of any Western Conference team in the last six months. Last year we made it to the playoffs and had a very good game. My point is, is that it's not even a quarter way through the season and we're still trying to, we're still trying to fine tune a lot of things. I know after the game, Sam Johnson expressed some frustration about players not getting him the ball. Is that something that every striker in the world probably feels, or do you feel there's some validity to that, and how do you maybe address that with the players? Um, well, it's already been addressed um, around the world. Yeah, I think any any forward um, wants more of the ball. I just think that Sam's new here. Sam's new to the country, to the culture, to the environment, um, and Sam knows now that, that, that that's not acceptable, you know, to say that. Uh, in public, uh, whether you feel it or not, that's something to be dealt with behind closed doors. And we've been talking about it and dealing with it. Um, and he was—he—he he knows he wasn't—it wasn't right for him to express it that way. Um, and he talked to the team already, 
as, as I did, had a long meeting with Sam. You know, Sam is somebody who wants to help the team. He wants to get behind. But again, he's new to how we want to play. So sometimes his runs are a little off with the distribution of the ball, which is natural. I mean, I could look back my first year with Tim Cahill. Um, everybody wrote him off. The second year he came back and he had 16 goals. You know, my point is, is that that's a big player. Even Henri, even Henri took a while to get adjusted here. Um, but then he comes back. So it, it's a difficult league to come to. Um, and I know it's, it would be difficult for, uh, say, an American MLS player to go over to the EPL, the pace of the game, the quality, uh, all that stuff. So it, take, it takes a while to get used to. So Sam knows, knew, I thought he knew that. We had many talks about it before. Now he, he certainly knows it. Um, and it's not an issue at all. When it comes to Colorado, how much of an opportunity is it them with an interim coach and kind of where they're at to get three points on the road this weekend? Well, I mean, cliche-wise, it's a trap game, you know. Um, there's always a response when there's a coaching change, and I thought there was a response to them last week even though they lost. Um, again, we're not getting wrapped up in their record or, or, or anything that's going on over there. We're just continuing to focus and make small improvements until big ones can be made. I'm waiting for the huge improvements, but at least small improvements to worry about how we're going to approach the game and we're going to play. So uh, you've talked in the last couple of weeks about Nick getting closer, Everton getting closer. Are you going to have a chance to at least consider them and have it be your decision instead of a trainer's decision? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, once they're cleared medically, 100% then it's my decision until that I'm not a doctor you know I can't read an x-ray or an MRI report um, once they're cleared then of course it's my decision um, Everton and Eric Holt were out today doing passing um, I'm trying to think who else yeah they were out doing the beginning part of practice and then Nick participated pretty much full um, so I, that would tell me that Nick is ahead of the other two and we're going to see how he responds from today and, and getting into Thursday and we're going to make a decision and figure it out. In terms of um, offsides, I know Sam had I think it was four offsides. As a coach, do you view offsides as a positive because you guys are being aggressive or do you, the reverse for other reasons where maybe you know you guys aren't executing the game plan how you would like? It's a good question. Um, I think there's positives and negatives. In it. The positive is exactly what you said, that we're playing forward. Um, negatives are something's off if th with offsides like that, whether it's the player's run or it's taking too long to play the ball. And I know after the game I said too slow and to get the ball forward. Looking back on the tape, I definitely think there were some instances when we were too slow to execute the pass, but there were also um, some, some instances in those offsides when the run just was too straight ahead of, besides towing between two defenders until the ball gets played, the curve run. So it's a combination. Uh, but yeah, it is a positive in a way that we are playing forward, but you know, that'll come with time with the understanding from a new player. How much does that, even if you don't execute it right and, and the flag goes up, what kind of impact does that have, you know, as a former player you'd know, even though in that moment it was fine, but you start worrying about the next time and, you know, maybe you're dropping a step oh, deeper. you're talking you're about worried. on the opposing is there, side. Is yeah. there a positive impact from the offside? Yeah. You lose possession I mean, ball? but yes and no. Yes, because we know you have a, if they're playing that much forward and behind the lines and it's just that little bit of offside, then you know you're doing your job. You have a tight line. Um, but, yeah, you start thinking they're going to start going direct. Maybe that does have a thing. And I, I will say this is that I came down pretty hard in the video. Well, no, let me rephrase that. To my staff and talking ahead of the video we did this morning, I came down pretty hard after the game about uh, how many offsides and playing too slow. There were two instances on replay that was clear case onside. Um, and I just, I just thought that, that makes me frustrated because the one that uh, Donnie played uh, Corey through, who was one-on-one -on -one with a defender with Sam running behind. It was a two versus one. Um, it was onside. And I just, that frustrates me. And I know a lot of coaches because we have VAR now. And if it's that close, you're supposed to let the play run. And then VAR takes care of it. Uh, so after, my point is after the game, I was very adamant about we played too slow, played too slow. But there were at least two instances when we weren't too slow and it was onside.